All right, boys and girls, so this is just an example of one of the still life options that you have. And you'll see that this is an orange bowl and I have some different fruit in here. You will be able to um, possibly um, be able to borrow a piece of fruit from someone else if you really wanted to have something that isn't in your grouping, that's fine. And um, you may sit down next to whatever still life you in particular like. So um, the names are not on the papers. You'll just walk around and find the still life that you like and begin. So if I was doing this one, I'm gonna take my black oil pastel and I'm going to see that this is a round bowl. And when I do that, I can choose to put the bowl over here on the side. I could put it straight in the middle. I could make it so big that it goes right off the page, but I'll just start right here. So I'm gonna do a circle. If your bowl or your plate doesn't end up being exactly circular, no big deal. No one will know that your bowl wasn't round. Maybe they'll think your bowl was oval, no big deal. So now I'm going to begin drawing my fruit. Now I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit so that you can see how I'm gonna do this. In um, for first, because we actually want to draw what we see. So if I look at this apple and I'm looking at it straight down, I'm going to um, put my apple right here. And now I want to represent this part right here. So just to be really simple, I can just do almost like a little smile and then put a stem on there, even though there's, well, there's a tiny little stem on there. So that's my apple. So now I'm going to move on to the next thing. I have this one here. So I don't even need to pick it up. I know that it's right here, so I'm just gonna put it right next to it. And notice if you don't like your shape, you can do just like me and just kinda fix it until you have something that you like. And then that one has a stem going over here. I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna draw my orange here. And the orange has this funny little thing right, right there. There we go. I got this little guy in there. Now, once you have your fruit drawn, if you would like, you can pretend that there's a piece of fruit maybe on the tabletop over to the side. So maybe I would take out my apple and I would pretend that there was an apple here. Then I could just draw it right over here. Okay, so this is what we call a bird's eye view. It's as if there's a bird flying, that's my bird, flying overhead looking down onto the bowl of fruit. And now it's um, being able to see the still life there. So now we need to start painting. And today we are only going to paint the fruit because I really, really want you to focus in on the colors that we see in a piece of fruit. You might say to yourself, oh yeah, it's red. But actually, if you look in here, there's red, there's yellow, there's some orange, there's a little bit of pink. So when we paint this, we wanna reflect that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose two colors that I'm noticing. So in this case, I'm noticing red and I'm noticing some yellow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the dip, dip technique. Now notice, I'm not saying stir, stir. I'm saying dip, dip, look here. I'm gonna dip into the red, straight up and down like a flagpole, I'm just gonna dip. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to dip into the yellow. You'll see that some other people dipped as well. Notice they did not stir it. That's why that's perfect, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to paint my apple. And when I do, you're gonna be able to see some of the different colors. So I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna start to fill this in. And I'm not going to try and, here I'm gonna do dip dip with my red and my yellow. I'm not gonna try and blend these colors together because I kind of like it that I can see the different colors that went into the apple. Now, I also can see a little bit of green in there. Do you see that right here? So I might dip into the green and put just a little bit of that right there. Now that started to get a little bit dark. 
So I could also always add just a little bit of white to kind of brighten it up there if I don't like how that looked, okay? Now, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna rinse it out, and you just kind of rub it against the bottom of the water well. You're always gonna to wanna to go like this to get the water, don't tap it, because then you might splash everybody else. And then you can come back and get to work. So I'm gonna finish up my little apple there, work in some of that green there. And now it's time for me to move on. So now I'm going to do my orange. I notice on my orange that my orange is very orange. What a surprise. And it has a lot of yellow in it. So I'm gonna dip into the orange dip and I'm gonna dip into the yellow. And I'll come right here. And off I go doing that. So I'm just gonna fill it in. If I want it to be a little bit more yellow, I can just dip just into the yellow and let that mix in there, where you can actually see my brush strokes. If you look right here, you can see that, right? And that's fun, you just leave it just like that. We'll come back and do shadows and things like that later. I'm gonna continue working here. My next apples are, are kind of a greenish and yellow color, so I'm gonna dip into the green and into the yellow. You can see it right here, how that looks, Oop, right here when I dip that. So now I'm gonna come and fill that in. And if I decide that I don't like it, that my apple is quite so green, then what am I gonna do? If you said dip into the yellow, you're a genius. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick up some more yellow and just kind of blend that into there until I like it. So, boys and girls, you are gonna continue doing your fruit, and then next week we're gonna work on the plate and on your background.